Hi everyone, in today's demo, we are going to look at how Ansible can be used in compliance, hardening, scanning, and remediation for JBoss application servers. Over here, I have three newly installed RHEL 8 instances. We are going to use Ansible automation to first set up the JBoss or Wildfly application server running on them before running compliance scanning as well as remediations on these uh, instances, right? So as you can see over here, right, I have this uh, particular IP address, right? So um, if you just look at, um, you know, the instances itself, it's the same IP, right? So we can see that uh, after logging in, uh, you know, nothing gets installed at this point in time, right? So what we want to do over here is that, um, you know, I'm coming in as a middleware engineer, right? Uh, so I have a couple of, uh, Job templates. So the first one that I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, deploy Wildfly, uh, the job template on all three servers. Right. So what's going to happen next is that it is going to go through the playbooks, um, and we'll just uh, start the installation uh, of the necessary packages, right, on uh, all these instances. So we have to wait for a while for the installation to complete. All right, we can see that everything has been downloaded without issues, right? Um, so if we were to go back to the the VM, right? You can see that uh, the JBoss user has been created. Um, you know, we can connect, uh, for instance, uh, using the JBoss CLI, right? And yep, you know, everything is in, right? So, um, you know, if we want to check um, the TLS version, we could just run a command, for instance, and we can see that these are the results, right? Um, so one of those things uh, that can happen over here, right, is to also leverage on some of the stuff that has been done um, by Red Hat, right? Uh, for instance, under the Wildfly common criteria, there is already a list of uh, different compliances uh, that, um, you know, can be used. And um, these are fairly recent uh, additions and updates um, to, um, you know, the collection itself, right? Uh, this falls under the um, Ansible collections uh, for JCliff. So, for, so, I mean, more often than not, right, we will uh, often have other additions to the common criteria uh, when it comes to doing the hardening. For instance, in this case, uh, you know, other than the checks that is done by the common criteria, um, we are adding a few other things, right? For instance, um, checking on the informational headers, checking on the stack trace, the TLS version, um, you know, uh, whether the welcome web application uh, is being set up, right? So in this case, right, uh, we have set the default variables. Uh, basically, the value, for instance, uh, that's required uh, for the information header, right, should be false, right? So if we detect anything that is um, true, right? In this case, uh, we're going to flag it out. And for instance, uh, we, we saw earlier on with the command line checks that um, the value is actually a list uh, with 1.0, 1.1, and uh, 1.2 TLS, right? So it means that based on the default criteria, this is not um, going to be okay with us, right? Um, and of course, you know, we, we set up things like um, how we can remediate it uh, by setting it to the default values, right? Like in this case, we are setting the value back into uh, 1.2, right? So if we were to go back to the Ansible tower, right? Uh, the project itself right, is actually pointing to the Git repository, right? And obviously being the middleware engineer, um, we did a base, row base uh, control to make sure that uh, nothing can be changed uh, over here, right? So if we go back to the inventory, you look at the middleware, Right, um, you can see that um, there are multiple groups over here, right? Uh, there is this uh, application one, two, and the Wildfly group, which uh, represents um, all the hosts. If we go into the host uh, itself, we can see that uh, more often than not, right, you will have different uh, applications uh, running within the environment. So some of which may have uh, criteria which are different 
from the default um, settings, right? So in this case, uh, you know, based on this demo, I have two servers which are belonging to the app one group and there is one that belongs to the app two group. So the servers in the uh, web one, sorry, the application one uh, group um, actually is something whereby they will just uh, follow the um, default um, settings, right? So there's no need to change anything for this group. But for the application server that belongs to the app two group, there are some special requirements, right? So for instance, uh, we kind of assume that uh, due to some uh, limitations uh, when it comes to the uh, applications in terms of updates, it's not able to run TLS 1.2 then in this kind of situations, uh, we can actually override the default value by saying that, well, due to some special constraints or considerations, I actually have to you know, set a different uh, value for, for this guy, right? So for this particular application um, service, this group of servers will need to go with the 1.1 TLS uh, instead of the 1.2. So then we set all these things inside the group variables, which will then be, um, applied to all the servers uh, that goes under this uh, particular uh, application group, right? So this is kind of how the inventory has been set up, right? So um, another thing, of course, is that, uh, you know, we want to run the um, the workflow, right? Um, that will go and uh, scan uh, to go and see what are the problems with all this host. So we can run this it is going to um, do a scanning across all the three servers that I have and get um, all the results. And then it is going to compile into a very simple um, HTML report and send it via email um, to the administrators. All right, we can see that it has finished running, right? So if we were to go and check our email, right, we can see that there's a new email that came in with the report, right? So based on the report, for all three servers that we have, right, um, there are multiple compliance issues, right? We see that there are a total of four issues uh, that has been flagged out uh, by Ansible, right? So then uh, what are the stuff that we can do then, right? Um, but I mean, of course, before that, right, let's just uh, go to the second server itself uh, as well, right, just to uh, make sure that, you know, whatever that has been flagged out uh, is also true for the other server. So we will also connect uh, to the server. It, it is very similar, right? So this is the first server with application one running and this is the second server that has uh, another application running. So uh, what we can do next, right? We will run the uh, remediation workflow itself, right? Uh, to go and uh, resolve the problem that we are looking to fix. And so if you were to click on this, right, you can choose to fix the compliance issues that we are looking for. Uh, for instance, uh, to resolve the information and header problem, right? Uh, you know, we can do multiple selections. Uh, we can we want to fix the TLS version, right? We want to fix the uh, welcome content header, for instance, right? We can also select uh, which servers we want to run the uh, workflow against, right? So for instance, uh, I want to run it uh, against uh, app one group or app two group, right? So in this case, I'm just going to run against uh, everyone, right? So um, that we can see that um, different uh, remediation is actually being uh, applied on different servers based on what we have specified uh, in the group files. So let's just run this. So you can see over here that as the middleware engineer, right? I don't actually have the ability to run this without approval. So I'm just going to approve this uh, flow, right? As the change request uh, admin. 
So as the change request admin, I can actually approve or deny the flow. Right? So in my case, I'm going to approve it. Um, and then I'm going to go back as the middleware engineer. Let's go to jobs. We can see that the workflow has started, right? So because it has been approved. So the next thing that it does is it actually goes and uh, run the remediation, right? Based on what we have uh, set. So after running all the commands to remediate, it actually restarts the um, JBoss services using the handlers. All right, so let's just uh, go back. And then the next thing that it does is that it automatically uh, scans again. And uh, what will happen after this is that it's gonna send us an updated report on uh, what was done after the remediation, All right? Uh, so it's just gonna go through very similar flow as what we saw um, earlier on. So let's just take a quick look at uh, what we have, right? This is the first um, server. If we were to query again, we can see that uh, the first server, right, belongs to app one and it is being assigned uh, 1.2, right? So the second server, based on our assumptions, is actually a application server, hypothetically, that cannot be updated to TRS 1.2 due to some constraints um, for whatever reasons, right? So um, you can see that it is 1.1, right? So we have this flexibility uh, from an server perspective to make sure that um, all these servers are actually, uh, you know, being hardened and being configured to the specifications that we want it to be, right? So that gives us a lot of flexibility in determining what are the rules and policies that we want to apply on the JBoss instances. So let's just wait for a while for this to finish. So you can see that the stack trace is actually saying that it's not compliant because that's the only one that we did not remediate. Right? So the rest, uh, the assertion is going to pass. All right, the workflow has completed. All right, so let's just go back to um, our Gmail. Right, you can see that a new message has come. So let's just check again. Right. So, yes, right now we have that uh, new report that shows that three of the problems has been resolved and we're just down to one. Right. So obviously, um, you know, we have this flexibility to decide uh, we, we can just run this thing individually or that we can run this on the whole group as what we just did. Right. Uh, we have come to the end of the demo. I hope it has uh, been useful for you all. Thank you.